Hack your listeners, let's learn sumo. I'm Clayton. Welcome to the podcast. Let's have a look at the July tournament where I'm sitting here with my Midori Fuji towel, my Midori Fuji pen. I've got a copy of the July Buns K, and I've just finished watching two weeks of pretty, pretty awesome sumo. Uh, really happy with the winner, Hoshoryu, although to be honest, the three H's, we had Hoshoryu, Haku Oho, and Hakuto Fuji, all vying at the last step for the Basho, the Big Emperor's Cup. I didn't really have a favourite, to be honest. I was quite happy with Hoshoryu. I would have been happy with Hako Oho, the debutante winning. I certainly would have been happy with Hakuto Fuji winning. Uh, he's, it would have been his first win. Oh, I was a little bit disappointed for Nishikigi. He faded late in the tournament, maybe just running out of a little bit of stamina. I really would have liked to have seen uh, the Shin Ozeki, the new Ozeki, Kirishima, uh, take out a win in his first tournament as an Ozeki, but obviously he's gone Kataban. He's got to get eight wins up in September after uh, starting the tournament with an injury, came back. But to be honest, it was pretty good tournament. I was a little bit worried there about day 12. It seemed to go in a funny direction with a lot of upset wins. Uh, but I tell you what, didn't it finish with a real bang on day 15 with a uh, fight between Hoshoryu and Hakuto Fuji, a fight off for the Emperor's Cup. So we'll go through uh, what we saw in terms of how we how we saw each of the fighters. Uh, we'll look at Terano Fuji and his early days, Kirishima, the Shin Ozeki, uh, some of the contenders, including Nishikigi, Hakuto Fuji, Hako Oho. And then we'll have a look down the list and see who did well and who didn't do so well this tournament. Um, certainly, we had plenty of guys made their kachikoshi, uh, their winning record, and we had uh, quite a few that are still looking in a little bit of danger and might end up demoted down to Jurio for the next tournament. As we said, you've got to win or, win or lose, you're going up or down. So over the next uh, half an hour or so, 40 minutes, we'll go through some of the good fights from the tournament, some of the real standouts. We'll have a look at it. Uh, we might try and pick a tournament, a bout of the tournament. We might try and pick a kimarate of the tournament as well, a move of the tournament. Uh, we might have a look at some unusual kimarate that we saw during the tournament. And a couple of good and maybe not so good stories that we saw. So I hope you'll hang around and let's have a chat about sumo and the July tournament. So let's get underway and have a look at Hoshoryu. So after winning the Basho uh, on a fight off with uh, uh, Hokuto Fuji, uh, he was very likely to be made Ozeki and I think that'll happen tomorrow, Wednesday. So let's have a look. He finished with a 12-3 and record, winning the Basho. Uh, that gets him his enough wins for his Ozeki run. Uh, and let's have a look at how he got on. Day one, he beat uh, Tobizaru. It's a bit of a controversial fight that Tobizaru won. It's a bit of an awkward touchy eye. They kind of met halfway. It wasn't really a, a big hit. Tobizaru had a chance, but it was a pretty frenetic pace. They both went down... Fairly close together. Hoshoryu was probably very lucky in the end. He appeared to touch down just before Tobizaru went down. Seems that everyone missed it, including the judges. Some suggestion that Tobizaru was declared a dead man, which is where you uh, can't recover. But funnily enough, the uh, Gyoji, the referee, called it for uh, Hoshoryu, but there was no judges mono-e. So an Oshiyatoshi it was for Hoshoryu and a win. Probably quite lucky. Day two was a win over Shodai. Day three, he lost to Nishikigi. Nishikigi just seemed to have better balance. He recovered from an offense that missed uh, and Nishikigi took a big name. Hoshoryu tried to go for the big pull down, but Nishikigi avoided it. He got one hand on Hoshoryu's belt and pulled him down. Hataki uh, Komi. There's a, probably a little bit of foot slippage there as well from Hoshoryu. I think they call it a slippatoshi. Uh, that was a solid win by Nishikigi and uh, getting him in three and zero. Oh, 
uh, in his claims for a Sekiwake promotion. Day four, Hoshoryu beat Mitakiyumi. Uh, day five, he beat Abi. Abi tried to hanker on him. Hoshoryu saw it. He reacted. He dodged. Abi tried to get the back of Hoshoryu's head, but Hoshoryu recovered. He got an arm. He crossed Abi's legs and he collapsed onto his bum uh, with crossed legs. Uh, and that was a bit of an unusual uh, kimarate, that one. An okuri hiki. Hikiyatoshi, which is basically you're behind and you pull your opponent down from behind and they end up basically down on their bum. An unusual one. That one comes up as uh, probably a once only for the tournament uh, for this one. So we'll add that to our unusual uh, Kimarate. Hishoryu, he gave uh, Midori Fuji a touch up on day six. Midori Fuji and Hishoryu had a pretty good strong touchy eye. Midori got a really good upper inside left. Hoshoryu blocked his right belt grip and squeezed McDory Fuji's arms and went for an outside leg trip at Sotogake. That's a pretty good uh, Kimarate, that one. Uh, day seven. He was up against uh, former Ozeki Asanayama. It was a really good Awatanage victory. You could hear a pin drop the touchy eye. It was super quiet in the stadium. The two guys went at it pretty hard. It was really power sumo. Uh, Hishoryu got himself a, a very shallow left grip. Uh, he lost the grip and he was pretty much under pressure at the bales with Asanayama pushing him hard. He got an outside right grip and tried Nawatanage, but he saved it. Uh, and then he went on. they both went on one leg at the bales. Second go was just pure power. That was a fight of the day uh, and probably one of the fights of the tournament, to be honest. Hishoryu's win over Asanayama. Day eight, he beat Hiradumi, uh, sorry, Ura. Day nine, Hiradumi. Day 10, he lost to Kot- uh, Koto uh, Day 11, he beat Tamawashi. Day 12, he lost to Hokoto Fuji, which was uh, uh, probably a big win in the terms of where it put Hokoto Fuji. He does his little uh, focus prayer thing at the ring, Hokoto Fuji, a little wrist roll just before the touchy eye. Neither of them got a grip from the touchy eye, but both were exchanging, exchanging some fairly heavy sabari thrusts. And as a Shoryu went back, he just seemed to lose sense of where his feet were. He stepped back out of the ring. He slipped and fell on his face. Bit of a rookie loss, to be honest. A bit unusual. And that set Hokuto Fuji up for uh, his run for the last day. Uh, day 13, he Shoryu beat uh, the new Ozeki Kirishima. Um, it was a pretty pretty easy win there. He basically, Hoshoryu got him off balance at the touchy eye, grabbed his arm, and Hoshoryu just dominated him. Uh, from there, we had day 14. Uh, Hoshoryu beat Wakamoto Haru. It was a pretty poor hanker try from Wakamoto Haru. It's just not his style of sumo. He was finished off pretty easily because uh, once he tried that hanker, he was just off balance and it was a, a pretty good Kotanage win. It's really disappointing from Wakamoto Haru, that uh, move, and it just put him totally off balance. And if you see his fights from earlier in the tournament, he just he's a very balanced, strong uh, wrestler. Day 15, well, he had Haku Oho on day 15. It was set up for the final match, of, uh, sorry, the second last match of the regular tournament. Basically, the uh, as Hakuto Fuji had won his match earlier in the day, that basically meant the winner of Hoshoryu and Haku Oho uh, was going to be fighting off with Hakuto Fuji for the playoff uh, for the Emperor's Cup. To be honest, uh, Haku Oho... Just didn't quite get there. It was a pretty quick Watanage throw. Um, Hoshoryu got a grip and just showed him his strength and just turned Hakuoho over his hip. That set up the playoff with Hakuto Fuji. Uh, Hakuto Fuji being a really strong charger. Uh, Hoshoryu stopped it. He drove Hakuto Fuji out. He just wouldn't be denied at that point. So that's pretty much how uh, Hoshoryu got himself to that point in the tournament and ended up winning the Emperor's Cup. Uh, a fairly good display got him to uh, qualify for Ozeki and the Basho Cup, well, that just topped it off and that'll get him there in the end. So who did he fight? Who was in the the uh, run with him? Well, let's have a look at Hokuto Fuji. Hokuto Fuji really had a pretty good tournament. He started out 
uh, fairly early on. Uh, he was against uh, Kimbo. He beat Kimbozan day one. Takanosho he beat on day two. He lost to Nishikigi on day three. Uh, beat Miyagiru on day four. Sadanumi on day five. Kota Eko on day six. Surugisho on day seven. And Takayasu day eight. And Oho day nine. Tamoashi he beat day ten. So it was really up to about day 11 before he started meeting some of the bigger guys in the uh, Sekiwake and um, Ozeki ranks. He, uh, apart from Nishkigi, who was listed as Mega Shira 1 early in the tournament, and that he's, he took his loss. So uh, Wakamoto Haru, so that was day, sorry, day 11, he met Wakamoto Haru. Pretty, again, a strong touchy eye uh, that Hakuto Fuji is really well known for. Um, got into a bit of a grip balance and simply on balance and strength, Bakamoto Haru won by Yorikiri. Basically let him get his favourite grip. Uh, the fight he had against Hakuoho, well, that was another great bout, a really strong touch eye. Hakuoho is uh, known for his strong hits as well. One-handed grip, he denied the second-hand grip on both sides. Each one uh, held that one-handed grip. It's just good patience, good defence by both wrestlers. Uh, but in the end, Hakuaho showed that patience. He pulled him in hard, pushed him out and threw him off balance, and uh, Hakuto Fuji went out Watanage, uh, which was one of his rare losses. Uh, his loss to Nishikigi was effectively just a uh, slip yatoshi. Uh, he basically slipped uh, as he went down, so... You know, not not awful losses, but um, the ones against Wakamoto Haru and Hakuoho, I'd say he just lost by pure strength on those ones. Uh, so the other wrestlers in the mix, uh, we have to talk about the debutant Hakuoho, formerly Ochiai uh, from Jurio. He's up in his fourth ever tournament, his first de- his debut in uh, Makuchi. Day one, he beats uh, Aoyama, big thrusting battle. He forced. Uh, Ayama back, he beat Kagayaki day two, lost to Takara Fuji on day three, beat Bushazan day four, lost to Ryudan, who had a pretty strong tournament, day five, beat his uh, Jurio opponent, Gonoyama, on day six. Gonoyama beat him in a playoff for the Jurio Cup uh, in May. Uh, beat Endo day seven, Shonen Nomi day eight, lost to Dai Shoho on day nine, beat Kodoeko day 10, Takayasu day 11, Abi day 12, beat Nishikigi on day 13, beat Hokuto Fuji on day 14, and lost to Hoshoryu on day 15 for the cup. Look, uh, finished with an 11-4, really strong wrestler, great technique, uh, just a uh, little bit more experience here and there, but I mean, how can you criticise any uh, a debutant who gets eleven and four and is in the mix for uh, the Emperor's Cup on the first go? Just really good wrestling. Uh, really enjoy watching him uh, wrestle all the way through the tournament. Uh, from there, we might go back and have a look at uh, some of our higher level guys, um, our Yokozuna. Terano Fuji, well, he came in under a bit of an injury cloud still from earlier uh, in the May tournament. Um, he got himself a win first up against RB, and then he came up against Nishkigi in his second match, and he wore a loss. So he really tried one of those big double armbar grabs on Nishkigi, but Nishikigi had the power to throw Terunofuji out a Watanage style. It was quite the throw, and I think uh, Terunofuji, Terunofuji was quite uh, shocked at it. Then he faced uh, Tobizaru on day three. Uh, Tobizaru, very unusually, waited at the touchy eye. There was a bit of an exchange of Zapari thrusts. He got Tobizaru back against the bales, and Tobizaru is back arched. He was almost on his knees, and Terunofuji got a rear grip, and it probably loosened Tobizaru's belt. Uh, the belt, or one layer of the belt, went up to Tobizaru's armpits, and there was no stoppage by the Goji to fix the Mawashi, but as a result, Terunofuji just couldn't get a good movement against Tobizaru due to the belt. Uh, Tobizaru got a little bit of criticism for going for the leg sweep due to his knees, but I think it was fair enough. And Tobizaru just eventually got him and walked him out. Uh, 
Gotta Yota Kiri on the Yokozuna. So suddenly the cushions threw. We talked about the throwing of cushions earlier in the tournament. Uh, a Zabuton Onageru throwing cushions. We took that as a context of congratulations to Tobizaru for having a win against the uh, against the Yokozuna. But as a result, the end of that match, Terunofuji looked in quite a lot of distress, a lot of pain. He went out, Kujo. Uh, apparently, he's done a few discs in his back, so he didn't come back for the rest of the tournament. We talked about uh, Takakesho. He's gone Kataban for the uh, September tournament, so he'll be looking for at least eight wins to keep his Ozeki rank in September. Uh, K- uh, Kitashima. Well, Kitashima w- went out Kyujo for the first couple of days, the first three days. He was out injured. Uh, at the very last minute. So he ended up giving a uh, Fusen to Nishkigi, who got luckily a uh, default win day one. He was absent day two and three. Uh, Kirishima then beat Kotonowaka on day four, but then Kirishima racked up a loss against good old Tobizaru, the flying monkey. Kirishima had a really good first thrust of the touchy eye, missed his second one, which unbalanced him, and he basically got grabbed on the back of the neck and... Uh, basically retreated with Topizaru in hot pursuit. He bent back, tried to Watanage him, but he touched his foot down a moment before Topizaru. Bit of a big loss. Shodai, he beat on day six uh, and lost to Mitokayumi day seven, but the big loss was Midori Fuji day eight. Midori Fuji was having a pig of a tournament. Comes out in a new bright red Mawashi. There's some suggestion he wore that back in 2021. Uh, but remember, it's unusual for them to change their Mawashi belt. They got into a good, strong uh, tachi eye and took a bit of a grip on each other. Uh, Kirishima's belt appeared to come loose at the back, and the Gyoji found a break and stopped it. They stayed in position while the Gyoji referee tried to tie it, and they couldn't get it. The Yobadashi came in to help. Once they finally got it, it was about a two-and-a-half-minute stop. Chief Judge then intervened and made sure that they fixed Midori Fuji's grip, then tapped him on the shoulder, and away they went. Midori Fuji got an inside front grip to go with his outside really deep rear grip, and he tried to Watanage throw Kirishima three times before he got him. He forced Kirishima to step out to save the throw. It was quite the win and probably one of my matches of the tournament, that one. Uh, I brought about another cushion throw, a Zapaton on Onigeru. Uh, a Shinata... No, sorry, I'll try that again. A Shinatanage win, an underarm throw. So he beat Meisei Day 9. He was in a bit of trouble at this point. Beat Uro Day 10. Uh, beat Daesho on uh, Day 11. It was a pretty good match, this one. Kirishima absorbed Daesho's Sapari blows. Uh, standing still inside the ring, he let Daesho overbalance with some help, and he pushed him down for a Takikomi, uh, a front pull down. That was a pretty good win and one of uh, Kirishima's better matches. Uh, he beat Wakamoto Haru day 12. Wakamoto Haru, just a little bit of an inexperience there, got a little bit too upright at the touchy eye, got overpowered, and he was out. Yorikiri. It's just a bit of momentum. Um, lost to Hoshoryu, day 13. We talked about that. He was off balance at the Itachi Eye, uh, where Hoshoryu grabbed his arm and pushed him out. Hoshoryu just dominated him. Lost to Asanyama, day 14. Uh, the winner of that match was to get their Kachikoshi. The loser was going to get their Makikoshi, their losing record. Kirishima just lost or gave up contact uh, during a bit of a grip, and Asanayama took advantage, and a Sukiyanage throw. Uh, it was probably just a bit unfortunate. He just couldn't get his hands there. Maybe a bit of slippage with his hands. Again, lost to Abi on day 15. Kirishima just lost his mojo a little bit late. Uh, maybe a bit of injury, a little bit of heat. He was already cut a barn, so he also needs eight wins coming into September. Uh, we'll have a quick look at Daesho. Uh, Daesho was on his Ozeki run as well, but he only ended up with nine and six. Pretty much lost exactly the same way in his last three matches, and he's, I saw him lose this way in March, I think it was. He just gets too impatient, gets too much forward momentum, forgets where his feet are, 
and lunges forward, leaves himself open for the Hataki Komi frontal slap down. Uh, to me, that looks like a serious problem in his footwork and his balance and his patience. He's going to have to find a way to fix that up uh, if he wants to stay in the Sanyaku ranks. 9-6 and six is a good record, but for a man who is on his Ozeki run, uh, it's, a, it's quite an unfortunate one. Uh, he also lost to Nishkigi. Uh, Nishkigi just took out all of the Sanyaku ranks one after the other. Uh, Nishkigi waited for Daisho at the touchy eye, and then he absorbed the inevitable threshing uh, that Daesho throws at him with Sapari thrusts as he pushed him back to the bales. But again, Daesho was a little bit overcommitted. His feet went out from under him as he fell forward with a bit of Nishkiki, Nishkiki's helps. A hikake arm grab force out. Uh, a few other wins there. Lost again to Takanosho day 15, and that was one of those power thrusts. Wakamoto Haru, one of the other Seki Wakes on an Ozeki run. Well, he ended up at the 9 and 6 also. Um, Look, Wakamoto Haru, just day one, he lost to Shodai. Shodai just executed... Oh, sorry, that was uh, later in the um, tournament. Day one, he lost to Mitakiyumi. Uh, sorry, beat Mitakiyumi, beat Tobizaru day two, lost to Shodai day three, beat Midori Fuji day four, uh, lost to Nishikigi day five, Meisei beat on day six, Abi he beat on day seven, Cotton Awaka he beat day eight, Ura day nine, lost to Onosho on day ten, uh, beat Hokuto Fuji day eleven, lost to Kiroshima day twelve, we just talked about, it got a bit too upright. Now, it's probably worth talking about his loss to Shodai. Shodai executed a really good plan to restrict Wakamoto Haru's grip. Wakamoto Haru loves that outside right, inside left, uh, goes for it almost every time exclusively, um, and Shodai really executed a good plan to keep his arms out of there. Um, Wakamoto Haru and Daishu, they need something special for the Aki tournament in Tokyo in September. Realistically, a strong September and a strong November would both, both be needed for uh, them to be considered for an Ozeki promotion. Uh, down in the Komusubi ranks, Abi 6 and 9, he'll fall back into Magashira. He was probably unlucky to fight the Yokozuna day one. Uh, and Kota no Waka, he's likely to be promoted to Sekiwake on the back of an 11-4. and four. He has a pretty good record to finish. Um, he is helped by his height and weight advantage. His one-handed style just seems to hamper him a few times this tournament. Uh, so if we look down further, Nishkigi at Magashira 1. He's definitely going to go up to Komosubi. He finished with a 10-5. and five. Look, he was really in the run all the way through this tournament. Uh, basically got a Fusen win over Kirishima day one, beat Tero no Fuji day two, beat Hoshoryu day three, beat Daesho day four, beat Wakamoto Haru day five, beat Abi day six, and took his first loss to Kotonowaka on day seven. Kotonowaka got an he got the touchy eye, and it was just an easy momentum push out Yorikiri. Nishkigi was just off balance, just one of those things where you lose the touchy eye. Beat Tobizaru day eight, a little bit of a Controversial win. Tobazaro went back. Nishkigi went down. It was a bit of uh, conjecture as to whether Tobizaro was his whole body was outside the ring as a dead man rule. Again, no mono e was called on this one, and uh, Tobizaro got the win. Uh, a little bit unusual. There is a picture on the Instagram of Let's Learn Sumo. You'll see a little screenshot there of Tobizaro. Maybe with one toe on the bales and, uh, and Nishikigi going down. So a little bit unusual there. Uh, beat Mitakiyumi day nine. And I, I think one of my notes there is, wow, Nishikigi is the real thing on that day. He got his kachikoshi, uh, Yorikiri, but gee, he was in trouble. He had a double inside grip, but uh, Nishikigi uh, went, uh, went to the bales. Uh, just used good power and got a, a great Wakatanage move uh, to get control and for a push out Yorikiri. That was one of the fights of the tournament as well. Uh, we've got Nishikigi and Mitakumi day nine. Uh, beat Meisei day 10, Endo day 11. Lost to Shonanumi day 12. Um, pretty much Nishikigi waited for Shonanumi at the touch eye, got a grip. But he kept trying to go for his inside double grip and Sean Anumi took advantage, used his arm to Kotanage him underarm grip, beltless throw, uh, and then lost 
uh, three times in a row to Hakuoho, Ryuden, and Hakato Fuji, which pretty much ended his tournament. It was a bit of a shame. Uh, Nishikigi had such a strong tournament. I think the heat just racked up those last four losses and put him out of the uh, out of the game. So some of the other names are Sanayama, former Ozeki, eight, four, and three for the tournament. Eight wins, four losses, three absences. Look, he fought really well, but he's lost to Shoryu, causing a bicep tear. He missed three days, but still got his Kashikoshi. Uh, probably the matches I think I've noted there were uh, Hokuseho. He got into a leaning battle. He tempted an Iwatanage, but Hokuseho got him off balance and lifted him out of the ring. Uh, to take a loss there. He beat Tobizaru day 12, uh, beat Shodai day 13. Uh, just some of those were just really good grip battles, got a good grip and walked people out. Um, Kirishima he beat on day 14. Like you said, Kirishima lost contact or gave up contact and Asanayama took advantage, uh, beat Wakamoto Haru on day 15, just got his denied Wakamoto, again, denied Wakamoto his grip and simply Yorikiri walked him out. Uh, the other debutante, Gonayama, 10 and 5, a strong start, uh, but he really fought most of the lower guys, didn't fight uh, any Sekiwake for the tournament. My favourite, and I'm sorry, I've got to mention, Midori Fuji. Uh, look, he's sitting at, uh, I think he dropped from Megashira 1 to uh, down the list for July after a pretty poor tournament in uh, May. His balance, his momentum, it just doesn't seem to be anywhere at the moment. Um, got to love his passion. Uh, he comes out for the fight with uh, Kitashima. I think he was trying to get a new mindset with the uh, the new belt, the new Mawashi belt. Uh, and got that win over Kirishima. To me, that was one of the better wins I've seen him get, uh, but he did end the tournament, I think, on 4-11, sorry. He improved 4-11, got a win on the last day, uh, but he's going to find he's going to need some better footwork. He's at serious disadvantage in height and weight, uh, and he just gets a bit too overcommitted. Looks very similar to Daesho to a... A little bit of overcommitment and momentum there and is makes himself prone to those Hitaki Komi pull-down moves. So uh, we can have a look at uh, the records. Kirishima, 672. He was Makekoshi. He's going to be Kataban in September. Hoshoryu, 12 and 3. Kotonowaka, 11 and 4. Hakuoho, 11 and 4 on debut. Hokko to Fuji, 12 and 3. Ryuden, a really strong tournament, 10 and 5. Nishikigi, 10 and 5. Gonayama. Uh, on debut, ten and five. Shonanumi on debut, ten and five. Endo, ten and five. So some really good tournaments there. Tobizaru, nine and six. Daesho, probably very disappointed with the nine and six, as will be Wakamoto Haru. Ayama saves himself from a Jurio demotion at nine and six. Takara Fuji, nine and six. Asanayama, eight, four and three, we talked about. Takanosho, eight and seven with his Kachikoshi. Koto Eko, good to see him get up for a Kachikoshi winning record. Yeah, he worked hard there. Had a couple of unlucky losses and got thrown into the crowd a few times. Ended up in about the third row, I think, of one battle. Uh, Tamawashi, eight and seven. And then we get to the Meisei, eight and seven. But poor old Ura is the start of the uh, Makekoshi losing records. Seven and eight. Kinbozan, Koto Shoho, Takayasu, all seven and eight. Chiyoshoma, six and nine. Miyagiru, six and nine. Shodai and Onosho, Abi and Oho and Daishoho, all six and nine. Uh, five and ten, we had Sadanumi, Nishiki, Fuji, Hiradumi, Hokuseho, Surigisho, all five and ten. Poor old Maduri, Fuji down at four and eleven. Mitakayumi had a, just a terrible tournament, three and eleven. Bushozan, I think we'll find him go back down to uh, Jurio on a three and twelve. Uh, some of the awards for the tournament, I think they gave out more Fighting Spirit Awards than they've given out in a very long time. Uh, Hoshori got one, Kotonawaka got one, Hokot Fuji got one, Gonoyama got one, Shonanumi got one, Hakuoho, he got a Fighting Spirit Award, but he also won the Technique Award. Nishikigi got the Outstanding Performance Award, and uh, so he should. Um, let's have a look, just last up, let's have a look at the uh, fights of the tournament. Look, I had a couple of fights there, the Tenno Fuji Tobizaru fight, you know Luce Mawashi, same as Kirishima and Midori Fuji, look both of those were underdog fights and you got to like an underdog they were pretty good uh, Gonayama and Chiyoshima on day 2 what a great slap fest, 
I'm a bit partial to a slap fest. I think there's a bit of feeling in that fight. Ura and Hokuseho, that was an interesting fight because it was a leg wrapper Watanage style technique. They called it an Akuridashi rear push out. Um, Ura tried to get a push, wrapped his leg, almost face down, grabbed Hokuseho's knee. He ended up with Hokuseho in a rear grip and pushed him to the bales, but Baiji had to work hard to get him across for that uh, Akuridashi. Uh, I think we mentioned Hoshoryu and Asanayama. That was on day seven. That was just good power sumo at the touchy eye. Uh, Daesho and Hiradumi. Uh, you want to see a good threshing machine by Daesho. Day 10, that was a great fight. Nishkigi and Hakuoho, day 13. Uh, strong sumo, good defense. Uh, I think that is one of the, the, the better sumo bouts you'll see of two large men with serious uh, power. Hokuto Fuji and Hakuoho, day 14. Again, strong touchy eye. Uh, good defence by Hakuoho. Showed himself to be a, a very good uh, wrestler. Out of all of those, look, the one that I enjoyed the most had to be Kirishima and Midori Fuji. Uh, Midori Fuji is such a small guy to take out the Ozeki uh, in that way. Even with after the stoppage, I think that was still really well done to keep his, uh, keep his uh, tournament going there. Uh, move of the tournament, uh, look, I think on day 15, if you look at Midori Fuji and Hokuseho, Midori Fuji somehow lifted Hokuseho, who's probably got about a 50 kilo advantage on him, and Shitatanage throwed him clear off the ground. Uh, it was quite the move. You'll see it on the Twitter stream uh, at Let's Learn Sumo. A couple of unusual Kimirate techniques this tournament. There was... Uh, a few very unusual ones. Uh, an Akuri Hikiyatoshi, that's one Hoshori Uanabi, a bit of a rear pull down. Uh, a Kiri Kayeshi, uh, using a knee behind rear pull down, that was Endo and Vittoriu. A Totari, both arms pulled through, almost looks like an Uatanage, that was Ura and Mitakeyumi. Uh, probably one of the better ones I saw, very spectacular. Uh, was an Izori drop over shoulder throw by Miyagi and uh, Tokuno Musashi. That fight's also on my Twitter at Let's Learn Sumo. Uh, and I think the last one was an Azori uh, backwards body drop. But that one was last used by Ura back in 2020, then previously in the 1990s. I think I've got that one. That might be very similar to the Tokuno Musashi one. Couple of good stories. Uh, Hakuoho, look, he finished day 15. He just looked super disappointed to come re- second runner up. Uh, he's got nothing to be disappointed about. It was a great debut. Mitakeumi, look, uh, I'll call it a good story. He finished with a really poor record of 4 and 12 for the tournament, uh, 4 and 11, sorry, for the tournament. His father passed away just before the tournament started. He was doing the, the tournament as a tribute to his fa- uh, father. Day six, his, uh, his former elementary school, all the kids turned up. Uh, they were up in the crowd cheering super loudly for him. Unfortunately, he couldn't pull off a win, but it was a lovely moment. Uh, last little thing, little Goji down in Johnny Darn on debut. 16-year-old, he was trying hard to get himself into the uh, sumo. He wrote in and wrote in, and they finally trained him up, and they've got him in the ring. Saw a couple of his fights. Looks great. Um, stick bug, uh, I, you know, I'm partial to an underdog. A little bit of stick bug sumo. Uh, Najima down in Jonadan. Well, he finished with a, I think, a three and four record, which is unfortunately in that level is a uh, makikoshi. But uh, to be honest, he had an unlucky uh, refight on one. Uh, I think he did well. He looks like he's put on a tiny bit of weight. So that is the July tournament from. Go to Wo, uh, Hashoryu. Look, as I said, I think he was a deserving winner. Uh, I think he probably thought he could probably fight a little bit better. He probably was a bit upset with a couple of his losses, but in the end, when it counted, he got his wins up, uh, took the cup against some fairly strong competition in both uh, Hakuoho and Hokuto Fuji. I would have been happy with any of the three of them winning. Certainly uh, the debutante, that would have been quite a thing. I don't think a debutante has won in uh, over 100 years. Hokuto Fuji from Saitama, oh, I would have liked to have seen him. I think if he keeps fighting well like that, he'll be uh, there again. But losing the uh, Terunofuji Terno and uh, the Ozeki from 
the tournament and then losing uh, the other uh, Shinozeki for the first few days really opened up the race. So uh, there's not many opportunities like that come around. And Hoshoryu, good on him for taking the uh, chance to get himself up there for the win. So really good tournament. I was a bit worried day 12, but it really came through and delivered on day 15. Next uh, episode, we might talk about the dead man rule. I'll uh, do that one later in the week. We'll do a little uh, one of our little three, four minute lessons. We'll talk about the dead man rule, see if I can keep it short. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed my little review of the tournament uh, from Nagoya uh, in July. We'll talk again, uh, hopefully at September when the Tokyo tournament gets up and running again. Uh, as always, visit me on Instagram, Twitter or Facebook on Let's Learn Sumo. Leave me a comment or a message uh, and I'll try and get back to you. Uh, as always, see you next time. Hakioi.